So in this question, they give us this expression over here. Now you need to identify that that is a hyperbola, hyperbola, and then they give us this information over here. So they give us the domain, um, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept. Okay, so the first question, and I will split these up onto different pages, by the way, um, but these are just all the questions that we will do. So let's start with the first question. It says, show that the equation of g is this over here. Okay, so, right, I've seen many of these types of questions before. So, um, here's an x and y axis, okay? Now, they're saying that the domain of this hype, um, hyperbola is anything except negative 2. So, we go to negative 2, and then just put a dotted line through that. Um, what that means is that's your vertical asymptote, okay, at x equals to negative 2. We then have an x-intercept at 1 and 0, so that would be over here, um, okay? Uh, that is k, and that is at 1 and 0. We have a y-intercept at 0, negative half, which would be there. Okay, so now we don't know the horizontal asymptote, so we don't know if there's maybe going to be a dotted line there, or maybe there. We don't know that, okay? But what we can do is, with a hyperbola, this part here will tell you where the vertical asymptote is. So for example, if it says um, y equals to a over x take away 3, then that means the graph has moved 3 places to the right. And so if it was like that, you would have a vertical asymptote at x equals to 3. Okay, let me show you a few more examples. Let's say, for example, you had y equals to a over x plus 1. Then that means the graph has moved one place to the left. And so your vertical asymptote would then be at one place to the left, which would actually be where x is equal to negative 1. So you've got to try to think about, because we have a vertical asymptote at minus 2, you've got to try to think about what this could be. Well, well done if you realize that that means we would then have y equals to um, x plus 2 at the bottom. Not x minus 2, x plus 2, because that means the graph has moved two places to the left. And we can see here we've got a vertical asymptote that is two places to the left. A nice way to do it is if you take this denominator and you make it equal to 0, then look what you get. x equals to negative 2. Okay? All right, so we have that, and we can say plus q. Now, what I think we can do next is we could possibly um, substitute this x-intercept into the equation. So this x-intercept um, is 1 for x and 0 for y. Okay, if I simplify, that'll be a over 3 plus q. Nothing you can do there because you've got two unknowns, a and a q, but many of you have probably realized we can just go repeat that now by using the y-intercept. And so we could say, um, so you could plug y as negative a half, and then a, I'm plugging it into here by the way, and then x is uh, zero, you see it says that there's a zero plus two uh, plus q. Then I'm just going to 0 plus 2, if you don't mind, I'm just going to change that to a 2. And there we go. We now have um, two equations. This is the first one. This is the second one. You guessed it, simultaneous equations. Okay, I don't think we're going to need the graph, to be honest. Maybe we might need it a bit later. But for now, I need a bit more space. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this equation number 1. I'll call this equation number 2. And I'm going to quickly take equation number 1 and just get this q by itself. So if you follow along, what would happen is that I'm going to take this over to the left. So we're going to end up with negative a over 3. And then we'll just call that equation number 3. I'm then going to take that equation number 3 and I'm going to substitute it into equation number 2. Okay, so that means that if q is equal to negative a over 3, then I'm going to replace this q with negative a over 3. So that's going to le leave us with negative 1 over 2 equals to a over 2 plus... Uh, actually minus a over 3, okay? Then you see we got fractions over here, so we're going to get a common denominator. A common denominator of those numbers would just be 6, so a lowest common den denominator would be 6. That means I'm going to multiply this one by 3. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. 
I'm gonna multiply this one by three as well. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. And then I'm gonna multiply this one by two, and this one by two. And so now you end up with negative three over six equals to three a over six um, minus two a over six. Now when you have an equation and all the denominators are the same, you can ignore them. And so you now end up with negative three equals to three a take away two a. So negative three is equal to three a take away two a is a. So there we have our answer for a. Now we can just plug that back into here and we can end up with our answer for q. So q would then be um, negative a, which is uh, a is negative three over three. And so q is one. Now we can go plug our a into there and our q into there. And so we end up with y equals to negative three over x plus two and plus one. And that is exactly what they have over here. So well done guys. Now the question carries on. So now the next part says, write down the range. Okay, so if we look at any hyperbola, okay, let's say it's got a dotted line here. How do we know that it's there? Because you make this equal to zero and you end up with x equal to negative two. And so that is a vertical asymptote. What does this do to a graph? Does that move it up? Does it move it down? Well, well done if you remember that it moves it up. So that means we have a horizontal asymptote over here at one. So check this out, guys. If you ever wanna look at the domain, then that's all the x values. So see if you can go from this side all the way to this side. Is it possible to do that without lifting up your pen? Well, let's try. No, 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 no. Oop, there, we can't cross that line. We have to jump over and then we can carry on. What that means is that the domain, which is the x values, can be absolutely any number except for over here we had to jump. So x is not allowed to be equal to negative two. And that's exactly what they said here. Now it works the same for the range, which is really awesome, is that let's say for example, you wanted to go from bottom to top or top to bottom. Let's see if we can. No, 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 no. Oh, there's a dotted line, so we have to jump over and then we carry on going this way. So what that means is that y could be any number except for this um, horizontal line over here, which we had to jump over. So y is not allowed to be equal to one. And so that is the range, okay? And you can do this technique for any hyperbola. Let's move on to the next part. So this question says, Determine the equation of H, which is the axis of symmetry of G. Okay, so let's hold up over there. We know that if you have a hyperbola, and for example, so like let's say you've got asymptotes over there and over there. We've got these equations of symmetry for any hyperbola that goes through there and then it goes through there, okay? Now, remember that this one over here has a positive gradient, and that gradient will always be equal to positive one. So we can just say one x plus c. And then this one always has the negative gradient, and it's always gonna be negative one. So that's y equals to negative one x plus c. Then to find the equation of the equation of symmetry, what we normally do is we just take this point over here where they, um, where the two dotted lines, where these two dotted asymptotes, where they intersect each other, um, we use that value to then find the value of C on each of those equations. Okay, so let's see what they're saying here. They're saying determine the equation of H, which is the axis of symmetry of G in the form da 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 da, where M is bigger than zero. So what they're saying there is that M is positive so they're talking about this line over here, the one with the positive gradient. So we can then say y is equal to one x plus c. We don't have to say mx because we know the gradient is positive one, okay? Now, this is just a little made up drawing, but if we actually had to go and draw our one, from this part here, we know that the dotted line is here at negative two, so x equals two negative two, and then from this one, we know that the y value is equal to positive one, okay? So if you had to look at this point over here, 
its x value is negative 2 and its y value is positive 1. And so we can use that because remember those asymptote, I mean those symmetry lines are going to go through that point. So we can use that and substitute it into here. So that's negative 2 and 1. Okay, so now this 1 is a y value. So we go like that. And then the x is negative 2 plus c. And then you're going to end up with this. And then if you had to take the negative 2 over, you end up with c as 3. And so the answer would be y equals to 1x plus 3. You can also just call it x plus 3. You don't have to say the 1. This question says, write down the coordinates of k with a little line over here, which is the image of k. Now, what is k? k was the x-intercept reflected over h. What is h? h is the equation of the line that we worked out in the previous question. So let's make a little graph for ourselves. Because I don't know how you can do this for only two marks. The way that I'm gonna show you is a little bit more detailed, but I feel that it will explain, it will help you to understand exactly how we do this. I don't know how they only do it for two marks. Maybe there is some fancy way that I'm not seeing, but I'll show you the way I would do this, and it wouldn't only be worth two marks, it would probably be worth like four, but just check it out. So we're gonna draw um, a graph just so I can explain this nicely to you. Now we know that the original graph, um, the hyperbola, has a um, asymptote here at negative two. I'm not gonna draw the whole graph, um, and then we have this other asymptote at one, okay? Then we had the symmetry lines, which we know go through here. So one of them would go there. And I'm actually just going to draw that one. Of course, there's another one that goes that way, um, or it would have gone through there, but we don't need that one. So this was the equation of h that we worked out in the previous question. And what we found was that that line's equation is y equals to x plus 3. Now, we've got this point k which is at 1 and 0, which is over here. Now that is k. Now what they want you to do is they want the coordinates of this point after you reflect it across this line, okay? So you're going to be reflecting it across that line so that, um, so that this distance up to there is the same as this distance up to there. Okay, you see, so it's actually a fairly complex kind of scenario. So the way that I would do it, okay, is when you reflect something, um, you always have to reflect it at 90 degrees to the line of reflection, okay? So for example, if that point was over here, then 90 degrees would be like that and like that. It always has to go at 90 degrees. Do you understand? So 90 degrees. Okay, what you don't want to do is go at an angle, like for example, like there and then there. You have to hit the reflection line, which is this one, at 90 degrees. So, what we can do then is just draw a 90 degree line. Okay, I don't know where it's going to go. It might end up going there. I don't know because I haven't drawn this according to scale, but it doesn't matter because the mathematics or the math is going to work out. So, there's a 90 degree line. What I would then do is quickly find the equation of this line. It's not going to be difficult to do. The reason is, is that this line here, what is the gradient of that line? Can you remember? Well, it's 1, remember? So what is 90 degrees of that? What would, what would the line that is... So, so you know when two lines are perpendicular, right? Or 90 degrees. When you multiply their gradients, it always equals negative 1. We know that. So if I take the gradient of the first line, which is a 1, okay, and I multiply it by the gradient of this other line, um, which I don't know, which is this line over here, then if you had to go work it out, you'd see that the gradient of this line, which was this one over here, is negative 1. So we can say y equals to negative 1x plus c. Then to find the value of c, we can just plug in any point that is on this line. Can you see one? Whoa, this one over here, k itself. So we can go plug in 0 and 1 for the x. And if you had to work out c, you're going to end up with 1. So y equals to negative 1x plus 1. Okay. Ah, oh, so that means it's actually going directly through here. 
So like that. Okay, so now we have the equation of the green line and the blue line. Here's the blue line and here's the green line. Okay, so I would like to now find out what is the, this point over here? What is its coordinates? Well, to do that, to find the point where two lines cross, you make their equations equal. So you could say x plus 3 equals to negative x plus 1. Now you just solve for x, so you bring this one over. You can bring this one to the other side, so it'll become 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Let me just slow that down a bit. Kevin, you're going too fast. There we go. And then 2x equals to negative 2. Divide by 2, x is negative 1. Okay, so these two points, uh, or this point here, the x value is negative 1. To find the y value, you can just plug that x value either into this equation over here or this equation over here, it does not make a difference. I'm gonna plug it into this one over here. So y would be, so x is negative one plus three, and so y is two. Okay, so we now know that this point over here is negative one and two. So we could use the midpoint theorem now in reverse. Because if you think about it, um, we're trying to find this coordinate over here, which is called k prime. But we, uh, we know that it's gonna have an x and it's gonna have a y. Now we know that if you look from here to here, this is the midpoint, okay? So we could use the midpoint formula, which is x1 plus x2 over two, and y1 plus y2 over two. So how would you normally do the midpoint? Well, you would normally take this x value and you would plus it with this x value. You would divide that by two and you would get your answer. But we already know what the x answer is for the midpoint, it's negative one. So we can make that equal to negative one. Now, if you had to solve this equation for x, you would take this two to the other side where you would multiply it so it would become negative two then take this one over and you'd end up with x equals to negative three. So this x value here is negative three. I know it's more than two marks. I just cannot think of a nice, easy way to do that. Um, and then, okay, so now to find the y value, we do the same. So you would take this y value and you would plus it with this y value. You would divide that by two and you would get your answer. But we know the answer is two. So then you can take this two to the other side and you end up with four because two times two is four. And then you're just gonna end up with y equals two, four. And so there we have the answer. So the coordinates of k with a little line would be uh, negative three and four.